What can we do that will most please Amma? <laughs> No expectations from this world. I just want to give my love to all of you. No expectations. No expectations from this world. Just I want to give to you love. Who the love they need, God have come. He must not wait for two thousand years, five thousand years. Hmm? Suppose you are hungry, I can't wait till evening six o'clock. You need food. I have to give you food right now. So it is my home. Whenever I need, I will come. Yes, that makes so much sense. Hmm? It does. Hmm. I hope our God is understands. not restricted to time. Time is ours. There is a lesson from the Divine. Each and every step is a lesson of life. So, it is a Divine play, Tatsan. So that is why if you go inside, inside, inside with your insight, then once you touch that infinite within yourself, then you are able to find me, Baba, we are all pervading everything, what not, time, <laughs> beyond space, beyond everything. Having to do with the mother of Jesus, Mary, is Mary, was Mary an avatar? Yes, she is Divine Mother. You are the Divine Myself. Mother. Myself. Are you Mary? Yes. I was able to ask it. <laughs> That's your question. I gave clarification to your question. Shantamuni Swaru Pamu Prashantamu Ninilayam. Welcome to Soul Journeys and to Part 4 of Ama Shri Karunamai, recorded in the United States in May 2012. <laughs> Banudu so mudu dari tapuni Chintala saguni jagamum Triloka pavani Sai janani Shantamuni swarupamum Prashantamuni nilayamum Good morning, Ama. Good morning, sweet son. Thank you for this opportunity. You referred to around the world as Her Holiness, Amma Shri Karunamai. And in that vein, I would like to begin this interview by reminding you that every time we visit with you, you bring us a new message from you for the world. What is your new message for the world today? We have to love each other. We have to serve each other. We live in the world with harmonious love and unity and that is my expectation towards this world. I came to this, that purpose towards all of you. That's beautiful. As always, Jody and I bring a few friends and of course Bob and Marianne, we wouldn't be here without their inviting you to come to our great city. And our friend Mary Subjects is joining us too. And so I have some questions from all of them, if it's okay. You're welcome. And the first one's about an interest that I'm always interested in. The subject of Maya. The illusion, the drama, the play of life. The question is, why must there be Maya? Why must we live in illusion? <laughs> you are asking this question, Tatsan, Maha Maya itself. Herself. <laughs> <laughs> really? You are asking the question, Mahamaya herself. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, it's a common question. A lot of people want to know, why must we put up with this play and not get to the main event, our own self-realization? Maya is nothing but the I-ness only. 
minus is maya, minus is maya. So, this is a little circle, very little circle. When you come out of that minus and minus, your circle is boundless. All living beings are nothing but your supreme self only. So, maya makes people's heart uh, so limited only towards body level, that is it, that is maya. And its purpose? What is its purpose? Why, why does it do that to us? <laughs> <laughs> why can't we skip it? <laughs> you need for any school, suppose a student is reading in education in the school, suppose a student is in education time, they need examination. Without examination, who is going to school, no? <laughs> <laughs> so, the maya becomes our schoolroom. Yes, yes. And we need to learn the lesson to, to progress. Yes, yes. You have to know to discreet what is good and what is not good. So, if you have the perfect pure heart, then you know what is good and what not to do. So, maya is a beautiful, uh, great, uh, essential thing in the life to know the great things of the absolute divinity. That's very helpful because it's so confusing and so disappointing when people start to understand better the, the purpose of Maya or, the, or the, the, the existence of Maya. It's very hard to tell somebody who's not a believer or not very religious or on a spiritual path that this is all an illusion. I get into trouble all the time by trying to describe it and I don't have the ability to describe it well enough. But I think you've just helped us a lot by describing it as a school that we have to go through. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Maya is cause for the eyeness. When people are just without much maturity, they limited themselves in the eyeness, then it is like closing the door, sitting in a room and they want to see the sun outside. How can you see the sun outside when you sit inside the room and closing the doors? When you open the doors, come outside, you are able to experience the absolute truth everywhere. So, that is why Maya makes um, a limitation, a certain limitations are created by the eyeness of the Maya. Thank you. That's the best explanation I think I've ever heard, and it's very helpful. You began by telling us about your important lesson for the world is pretty much your constant lesson for the world, to learn to live from love. And the next question is, if our primary purpose in this world is to love, then what is our secondary purpose? What's the next thing we should do? Service. Service? And how do you define service? The essence of life is love. The action of love is service. And can we do service with physical actions such as helping the poor, helping those who don't have houses to live in? And can we also do it with our minds by, by sending love, by praying for people, by sharing our energy with people. Is that also a way of service? Yes. Uh, in your question itself, all the answers are there. To sending prayers, we can do the seva and building houses for uh, needy people and doing uh, service activities for the hospital activities, educational services. There's so many ways people can do. Lot of need in the world. So, that's why love and service, that's Baba's message. Everyone have power, follow that Amma's uh, aim is also just love and service only. So, you mentioned Sai Baba and you mentioned Amma's love and service. I'm thinking sometimes of those people who might be too frail or too old to pitch in and help build the schools that you have uh, in your mission and in your humanitarian projects or the village houses for the for the, the, the tribal people who are helped so much with the good water projects that you have. Can they also feel comfortable serving with their mind if they can't serve with their body? Yes, yes. They are very comfortable to serve other people also. 
they elevated so much by expecting by experiencing love from us and they are open their hearts lot and they also want to do service to other people also a question that really is intriguing to a lot of us who try to be good students in this school of maya on the spiritual <laughs> path is are there many people in the world today in the bliss of self-realization i know it's the goal but are there many people who have already reached that goal because of blessing of baba judy and tetson are in bliss <laughs> oh well, well thanks for telling <laughs> of course, us because bob and mary everybody was in bliss whoever believe baba they are in bliss they are in bliss say more about this yes love love gives you bliss the pure love gives you bliss uh, in the love you are totally surrendered to the almighty baba almighty you are surrendered to baba so what else you need a surrender soul get everything without any expectations baba's blessing hands is all the time with you so uh, no need to ask anything you need i need this i need that no need to ask anything all the time baba is enveloping all of you so that's why you are in bliss uh, even millions of disciples of baba all over the world they are in blissful state i don't think i've ever heard it expressed that way before that's a beautiful gift to all of us who are who are groping in the absence of baba's physical form to find bliss and you're telling us we already have it so thank you for that gift you and sai baba often say that we are not the doer very hard for those of us in the west to accept that concept <laughs> First of all, this is not an easy understanding for us for most of us because we feel like we are the doer. How much control do we really have in our lives? Uh this is really innocence, innocence. A uh, human plannings are different, divine plan is different. Divine plan. If you believe the divine plan, then you you know the play of divine the play of divine is different human plannings are different so it's a matter of however you are planning your plans are not at all materialized i'm <laughs> sure about that we were learning that yes <laughs> <laughs> we learn that day after day <laughs> so it's a shift in our awareness from what we think of as our human self with our human agenda to our spiritual self and in and in the human self we think we're in control but the real the reality is that we're not in control is that a correct understanding of what you're saying even that is also baba's will if baba will anything is happen if you will it's never going to happen <laughs> <laughs> even though sometimes we kid ourselves and think that it does happen and that, that feeds, is also divine will that is also divine will divine will to continue with the illusion that we are in control sometimes anything happen even a small movement of a ant put the leg next step it's the will of divine it's not the will of the any creation any anybody's it is the only the will of the divinity so If this you is believe or not a very important point because many of us takes it's very difficult to understand that your what you just said if i'm hearing it correctly is it every step we take is because of the divine will yes even when we take a misstep and fall down and hurt ourselves yes that's also divine will even if we hurt another person that is also divine will even if they hurt us that is also divine will even if we learning, hurt ourselves learning learning lessons baba teaching you through somebody the lessons and when you are watch yourself how ignorantly we are doing the actions how innocently we are doing the actions hurting people that's also that's a lesson from the divine each and every step is a lesson of life so if people have the awareness of spirituality they realize everything is god is through doing all these things through you so it's a divine play that son that is very helpful and i'm going to follow up on a point you made a year ago that i wasn't planning on it until now because i've heard you make repeated references 
to our beloved Baba, when you reminded us that Baba came to you, to your home, held you in his arms when you were an infant. Is, <laughs> is, is that because your parents had an interest in Baba way back then? They have a lot of interest in spirituality in Baba also. Really? Yeah, very really. Were they, do you, you were too young to remember, but when you were growing older, do you remember hearing stories from your parents of that visit? Uh, Ted's son, I'm re is younger in the body only, but not younger <laughs> in the self. Shame on me, of course. <laughs> so you self. were fully aware. Yes, yes. They are elder in the body, they are younger in the self. Mm -hmm. But I am very younger in the body, elderly than anybody in the world. Oh, that's well. That's old. <laughs> Hard to digest, no? Yes, it's impossible to digest. And, and while we're on this subject, a little bit about your parents. Can you describe them? Were they loving parents? Were they considerate? Were they good to others? They're very, very good and very divine people. Very divine. Very, so that's why I chose them. Very divine. And they're very beautiful souls, helping a lot of people, doing service activities. And they dedicate their total life only for divine sake. So that's why they never sit in front of me on the chair. All the time they're sitting next Behind to you. my feet. Next All to your feet? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, and since we're talking about this, one more question, if you will indulge us a little bit, because uh, I had a, a basic general understanding of the mission, the love of Ramana Maharshi. Until this past year, when we started, Jody and I, reading many books by a wonderful author, Paul Brunton, on the life of Ramana Maharshi. And of course, I have a vivid picture in my mind that will stay there forever of your beloved mother at the feet of Ramana Maharshi. And, uh, and I'm wondering, do you have any idea what drew her to his side, where he was the informant to tell her that she was about to have an avatar for a daughter. My biological mother, Annapurnamma, she is a very special soul. In innumerable lifetimes she did a lot of sadhanas, meditations like that. So she was a great, great, great soul, no doubt at all, very divine. And she was with Ramana Maharshi in, her ash in his ashram. And she have been to so many times uh, around the Parikram of the uh, Tiruvannamalai mountain, Arunachala mountain, mm -hmm. especially in the night times after 10 o'clock, some of group of people, disciples, they are going right. around, walk around the uh, Guru Pradakshna. They did that. And she loved Ramana Maharshi so much because she loved silence so much mm -hmm. all the time. And she he didn't went. speak very much. Yeah. He doesn't speak anything. She was there so many years there. She was young, young at that time. And she loved to be there itself in her entire life. Then Ramana Maharshi inspired her, no, you have to go back to home. You have a lot of um, activity, karma is there in front of you. I see. Because divine people are able to see the front of the life, what is going to happen to you. So that's the reason he sent her back. Uh, to again in the life. So her first love was Ramana Maharshi, but he was a good teacher in saying, go and serve the world, yes. go and serve your family, yes. go and do your duty. Yes, all the time she was inside, most inside, with that insight. So that's why she never have been anywhere. All the time she was meditating. That's. And did she recognize how how incredibly special you were from the moment she gave birth to you? Yes, she recognized. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> this, this is a wonderful story. What they did is, they both of parents did namaskara to the feet of the little baby. <laughs> when you were an infant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what a sight. I wish we would have had video of that. <laughs> and I can't tell you how much we continue to learn, and it prompts me to ask one other question. Uh, for example, those people who go to India today, let's say they're devotees of Sai Baba, or let's say they've read a, a lot about 
the, this, the Swami of Arunachala, Ramana Maharshi, is it useful? Are there any boons? Is there anything that profits them to go and walk around the mountain of Arunachala today or to go visit the Mahasamadhi of Baba? In Prashanti Nilayam today, they have they have go to Arunachala, they have go to Baba. They are all pervading. Actually, all of you no need to go there. Baba will come to you. But sometimes we want to go there. Okay, you have to go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a question, I think, from Mary Ann. You spent twelve years in the woods, in Andhra Pradesh and beautiful under British, rich with lots of water and, and woods and streams and wild animals without interacting with others. And she asks a very interesting question. How did you eat if you meditated all day? No food at the time. No food? And do you want to explain to us how that happened, <laughs> how, how you were able to do that? <laughs> we know, I'm, but I'd like to hear it in your own words. Yes. The divine, there is some nectar in the brain system, is oozing. Oozing nectar in the brain system. So no need of eating. Right now also I eat very, very less. Very less. You can't believe that. Uh, so very less food one time like that. Um, so no necessity of eating all the time foods and all the things. Spiritual body is divine. So this is a different body. So cosmic body is different. So if we intend to meditate for longer than 20 minutes a day by going to the woods to live <laughs> as hermits, we might require food. We might, in addition to our sadhana, we may require sleep and food and water, unlike yourself. Tats <laughs> um, no need to go to woods, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> world need you. <laughs> Lot of people need to listen your talks. <laughs> no need to go to woods. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. Here's another interesting question from Mary Ann. You've said, we can only be drawn to you if it's your will, if it's Baba's will, if it's Amma's will. Why don't you wish everybody to be drawn to you? It will take time for the birds to mature. The flower birds, they need some maturity to blossom. So we're on a different time scale, all That's of us. That's it. And depending on how many lives we've had and how much work we've done and how far we've come on this path, does that depend on whether or not an Count avatar shows up in our life? Countless lifetimes. Countless lifetimes. So it's not that we're special or anybody is special, but it's we put the time in. Yes. And we're all on that timeline yes. in our Maya life where at one point or another for each of us an avatar will show up? Yes. When time comes, we call you, then <laughs> unknowingly you are dragging towards us. <laughs> yes, unknowingly we were dragged to you. And it's been such a delight to realize that after our arrival. We're told that the golden age is coming Will we see it in our lifetime and when? Golden age means if people are speaking truth, living in bliss, living in contented life, their life is a golden life. If more people are oriented like that, they are leading in that, in that golden age. If people are in the golden age, their minds are not oriented towards spirituality, they are not in the golden age. The golden age means he who have the higher heights of the spiritual consciousness. Then in the Kali Yuga also you are in the golden age. So does this mean a thousand years ago the golden age was here for those people who knew that they were on a profound spiritual path? A lot of people in our Kali Yuga, they are living in the golden age already. They are not attached with the paltry things. They are not seeking for any of the materialistic uh, desires. Their heart is all the time fixed in God's heart, fixed in God's lotus feet, in Baba's feet. They just love and uh, they are so fascinated towards the truth only, not anything else in the world. So that's why they are in golden age. So Thousands of people are like that. 
and a, a difficult question for me to understand, I really don't understand it, why some parts of the world love to pursue God and some parts of the world seem to be indifferent. And right now, it changes from decade to decade or century to century, but right now it's my impression that those people living in Europe don't seem to have any curiosity or any interest in pursuing their spiritual path, religion or God. And do you have any understand, I mean, could you, can you help us understand better why that is? Because otherwise they have so much, they're so, they have so much education and so, relatively speaking, so much success, but that's an area they're not interested in. If any European people are seeing this program, listening to me, really they are so interesting to listen what Amma is going to say about this. Uh, there are four yogas in the world. One is the Bhakti Yoga, devotional path. Second one is the Karma Yoga. Some parts of the world, people are so uh, very intense, uh, they are in the Karma Yoga. They are dedicated totally their time to do the perfect work, in perfectly in time. So that's why, uh, how can we say they have no devotion? They are doing perfectly uh, the Karma Yoga, so they are also in the uh, uh, spiritual path itself, unknowingly they are also in the spiritual path itself. If everybody was closing their eyes and sitting in meditation and just all the time in the devotional things, who is going to take care of the world? So that is why this is also God's will. Some people are, they seem to be in the materialistic level, but I am sure they are doing perfect Karma Yoga. I really appreciate them. I love them so much. So, we are not to judge. We cannot tell when a one person no. is doing their path to God yes. different than somebody else's, whether it's better or not as good. And and you explained it perfectly for me to understand that we should never judge any yes. other peoples yeah. in the world. Yes. Uh, Mary Ann, again with a good question. You say, we don't have a clue what you are, what Sai Baba is. Can you give us a little clue? <laughs> <laughs> if it is a puzzle, I can give some clue for you. Okay, good. It is an unknowing puzzle, billions of lifetimes puzzle. <laughs> unknowing person, billions of lifetimes person. Unknowing puzzle. Unknowing puzzle. Yes. So that's why if you go inside, inside, inside with your insight, then once you touch that infinite within yourself, then you are able to find me, Baba, we are all pervading everything, what not, time, <laughs> beyond space, beyond everything. It is a benediction, absolute, so infinite and all witnessing, all knowing, all seeing. So, that is it. So, we can taste just a little bit of it if we follow that path, if we follow your direction. You are already in that uh, experience of bliss, yes. But I want more bliss. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely you will get, get some. <laughs> and I'm not sure I would even call what I feel bliss, but I'm very grateful that you call it bliss, because that helps me to understand how in each of us we already may be there when we pursue that spiritual path that rewards us on so many levels. The meditation after Mary Ann's yoga two days ago, much like the meditation after my, uh, the talk you gave yesterday, was so nice. Most of us don't have that much time in the day to do it. I think it was over an hour yesterday afternoon here in Cleveland. How do we balance our spiritual practice and our spiritual work with our survival and day-to-day -day duty? Everybody need not do meditation. People have different paths, the self-inquiry, like Ramana Maharshi, knowledge path. Some people can do the selfless service, karma yoga. And some people path is a devotional path, singing the glory of uh, Baba, bhajans. You are just in that uh, uh, divine tran trance of absolute happiness. So, all these activities are going to elevate people towards highest level of purity, blemishless purity. That's reassuring to know. That's, that's good because it, meditation isn't always easy for all people. 
and they get very discouraged and it's easy to no 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 need of discourage uh, some some people have different paths mm -hmm. but everybody destination is only the oneness yes which is still yes. a, a new term here in the west because oneness uh, we think of ourselves as the collective human family of god but there is only one yes and that's what we focus on another mary here mary subject wants to know why if all disease in the world is karmic related. Diseases right now? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. This is purification. Purification? Yes. Do we have to be purified that way? Yeah. Lifetimes karma will be in the form of some health problems. It is purification. They need not come back again with the same bodies. Hmm. So that's a very affirming way to look at the disease that we all have come to us. And she wants to know how long would a human body last without disease? In other words, if there's no more need for purification, I would guess you might say that there's no more reason for the body to live? Body will, um, with the blessing of Baba, Baba Amma will heal you. All the problems, they will take care of you. And what about natural disasters, tornadoes, tsunamis, hurricanes? Is that, are those karmic related as well? Definitely. Is it because of the human karma that's causing them, or is there another type of karma for the... Human karma. Yes, the, yes, human karma. And what can we do... This is a very interesting question from Mary. What can we do that will most please Ama? <laughs> no expectations from this world. I just want to give my love to all of you. No expectations. No expectations from this world. Just I want to give to you love. And so maybe you're teaching us right now that that could be a good model for all of us to follow to allow our love to go out instead of being kept inside of us to let it go out to others in the world. Bob's son has a couple of questions. Is there an individual left after oneness is achieved? In other words, is Bob still Bob after he's enlightened? Once he enlightened, he's not Bob. He's absolute oneness. The is melted in that absolute consciousness level. There is no identification of Bob or anything there. So there is no identification there. The circle become boundless. Hmm. One of his favorite sayings, I believe, is attributed to the Buddha. Joyfully participate in the miseries of the world. And I think as I try to understand what that means, it suggests that we're living in illusion, that we're living in Maya, and that our goal is to awaken. And his question is, why can't we just wake up? That's also we discussed before. Because of the school that we're in. <laughs> we have to go to school <laughs> first, right? <laughs> we can't get a free pass. No. <laughs> and get out of school quicker. <laughs> why are we in this duality? If it's truly a billion times better where you are, you talk about it frequently that it's a billion times happy and, and blissful. Yeah, reward. this duality is because of Maya. So when people overcome the Maya, then there is no duality at all. They are one with the Divine, one with Amma, one with Baba, and there is no barriers at all. Maya creates these barriers, Inus, Minus, Minus, Body, all these bound, boundaries. Once you cross the boundary of Maya, then you are absolute, you are seeing yourself everywhere in all the living beings. You feel your presence in the tree, in the pebble, in the stone, in the rocks, the mountains, mm. everywhere, in the planets, in all the creation, good, bad, everything, yourself only. You are not seeing the shell, seeing the pearl inside the shell of the Atman. Seeing the pearl inside the shell, not the shell itself. When you took form in the past, Amma, you were you always here as an avatar? Innumerable times. Innumerable times. 
see, when I hear people tell me that avatars come in time of need, being a student of history, I cannot recall a time when there wasn't need on this planet. So does that mean that avatars have always been with us, or do they come when just their special need? This world is my home, son. So I have to come to my home ah. frequently to take care of my children. That's really nice. <laughs> so suppose you have a estate, you have all the time you are going to your estate to see your estate conditions, no? This is like that. Jody has an interesting question about this. Please comment, if you will, Amma. Most Christians were raised Christian, could never imagine that God could incarnate more than once in different bodies. But you're saying that that's always happened because this is your home. Your time is a different time. You think this thousand years, five thousand years, ten thousand years. Our time is different time. So time, we are beyond time. So that doesn't time matter at all up. to you? Yes. And a couple of final questions, if it's okay, and one again from Jody about uh, her Christian heritage, where she comes from, having to do with the mother of Jesus, Mary. Is Mary, was Mary an avatar? And it would seem that the Catholic Church acknowledged this when a former Pope, Pope John Paul II, proclaimed Mary as he called her the co-redemptrix. I guess that means a redeemer, as was the nature of Jesus, her son. Was she an avatar? Yes, she's divine mother. You're the divine Myself. mother. Myself. Are you Mary? Yes. I think that's the question a lot of people wanted to ask, but that's too direct to ask. <laughs> Until I asked it, I'm surprised I was Did able it? to ask it. <laughs> <laughs> For a lot of people. That's your question. I gave clarification to your question. Yes, you did. So let's conclude. <laughs> Will you give us your benediction? As the, final. as the final question. Will you give us your benediction? Your blessing? Embodiment of Divine Souls, my most beloved sweet children, I love you so much from the bottom of my heart. If you believe me or not, I love you so much. I come to you all the time, I love you so much. Because all of you are my children. Uh, this is my responsibility to come to you, to take care of you, to heal you, to uplift you towards higher levels of purity, dharma, happiness and absolute peace. So that's why I just, I, I do my duty without any expectations from all of you. I love you so much. My thanks to our friends, especially to Marianne Burroughs for her questions and Bob Sun and for Mary Subject and for Jody's questions. And our greatest thanks, Amma, for you, for giving us your wisdom and your love and your insight. Very innocent questions. Thank you. <laughs> Jake Harunamai. I love you, Tetson. We love you. <laughs> Innocently asking the Almighty all these questions. <laughs> Mahamaya. Yes. Hmm? I, I, don't, I, I don't know anything. <laughs> don't know anything. <laughs> no. <laughs> Just glad to be here. Good to know that you're taking care of everything. Yes. Just have to get out of the way. If Bob's son is uh, wishing something, it's not going to happen. If Amma is wishing, it is going to happen. Well, no, Bob. Just wish good things. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're in school, remember? <laughs> well, good things is I get my A. Yeah, I don't want to have to do it again. Oh, what, A's? Get it right. Definitely. Yeah. Mom will help you. Mom oh, will help you. Thank you. It's all right. I think I'm getting a better idea of it. And it's just a limited thinking that we have because we're not connected with the oneness within. <laughs>
मेरीज अंडरस्टैंडिंग माया महा माया इन हाफ एन आवर इंटरव्यू शी अंडरस्टैंड महा माया दिस इज माया मेरी Yes. Love the love. Love the love. Who the love that need? God have come. He must not wait for two thousand years, five thousand years. Hmm? Suppose you are hungry, I can't wait till evening six o'clock. You need food. I have to give you food right now. So it is my home. Whenever I need, I will come. Yes, that makes so much sense. Hmm? It does. Hmm. I hope our God is not understands. restricted to time. Time is of us. Yes. No yes. one body. That's Tetson. I told you already. No, no need to go to Puttaparthi. No need to go to Arunachal. No need to go to Jerusalem or anywhere. Just go down. But you Ama. want to go, you have to go. <laughs> <laughs> but it, but, because but, the ego is not mm. satisfied until the ego gets what it thinks it wants e- and doesn't get. It's not ego, Mary. It's okay. love. Oh, love. Okay. Oh, okay. Hmm? Right. okay. It's love. Okay. Oh. If we want to go, it's okay. Yeah. Okay. No problem. It's not ego. It's a love towards God. You want mm-hmm. to see more. Yeah, but then, yes. Baba right. is in your heart. You, you love Baba. You are mad with Baba. You are so nice. You are you are die for Baba. Say, yes. but the, uh, the reason is you have to go. You want to love that. So that's the reason you are going there. Really, I, I have no need of going anywhere. No need of coming to you. But you you have not that awareness. I am with you. So that's the reason I am in this little. body that's right this <laughs> little body <laughs> so much power in a little body <laughs> mm-hmm. why we want to hang on to you we don't know we are you <laughs> you are already in my lap <laughs> oh, oh, thank you you know you are such a in my lap <laughs> and ama you say the total cosmos is under your feet and jody and i just heard a wonderful program the other day the most The most advanced scientists in the world are aware of only maybe four percent of the cosmos. In other words, there's so much even in this material world that we don't know. Is there life beyond the cosmos? Beyond the cosmos is only the absolute. It's only the absolute. And so that all of life is under your feet. That is. You don't know how many light lifetimes you are waiting to do it. Oh. Shantamuni swaroopam. Shantamuni swaroopam. Prashantamu ni nilayam. Ni kugala shantamu krodhamu ga marinan. नीकुगल शातम क्रोधमु मोमुड़ दारी तुने बाड़ सोमुड़ दारी तुने चिंत सा जगम त्रिलोक पावनी साई जननी शांत मुनीस्वरूपम प्रशांत मुनी निलयम